In his sixth year as a college quarterback and second year with the University of Washington Huskies, Michael Penix Jr. will be looking to win his first Heisman Trophy, while at the same time looking to lead the Huskies to their first national championship since 1991. And he's coming off of a 2022 season in which he was the number one passer in NCAA FBS, leading the nation in passing yards and passing yards per game. He was also second in total offense per game, third in completions per game, and 11th in passing touchdowns and points responsible for. He set the University of Washington single season passing record with 4,641 passing yards, as well as setting school records for total offense, total offense per game, and total offense per play. That University of Washington passing record had stood for 20 years. But it hasn't all been good fortune for Michael. It's actually been quite a bit of adversity. As in each of his four years playing for Indiana, he suffered season-ending injuries and his future seemed uncertain before joining the Huskies. So let's get into the story of Michael Penix Jr. But before we do, if you're a fan of this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe and comment below who I should cover next. I've also teamed up with Glance LED who makes these cool LED tracker panels where you can track live sports, stocks, and much more. Visit glance-led or you can click the link in the description and use discount code COUCHGM at checkout for 10% off. Michael was born and raised in Tampa, Florida, and in two seasons starting at quarterback, he passed for 4,243 yards with 61 touchdowns and just six interceptions. He showed off his ability to elude defenders and throw the ball accurately down the field, and although he committed to the University of Tennessee in high school, those coaches who had recruited him moved to the University of Indiana, and after being offered a scholarship from nine different D1 programs, he decided to commit to the University of Indiana just before Christmas in 2017. Although not the starter right out of the gate, Michael would work into the first few games for the Hoosiers. However, during his third game of the season against Penn State, he would end up tearing his right ACL and be ruled out for the rest of the season. He would have surgery on that right knee and he was ready to go for the 2019 season. He became the first Indiana freshman to start an opening game since 1998. He would go on to set the program's single season completion percentage mark at 68.8% completions, which was also sixth in Big Ten history. He also completed a school record 20 straight passes, which was the second longest streak in conference history. Unfortunately, in his sixth game of the year, he would suffer another season-ending injury. He would take a hit and damage the joint in which the collarbone meets the sternum and would require season-ending surgery. The good news is that it was in his right shoulder, his non-throwing arm. So another recovery and he would be ready to go for 2020. He would come out of the gates firing as in his redshirt sophomore season, through six games he would record 1,645 yards with 14 touchdowns and four interceptions. He averaged a Big Ten leading 274.2 yards per game, which was 18th nationally. And before his injury, he led the conference in passing yardage, passing yardage per game, passing touchdowns, completions, attempts, 60 yard passing plays, 50 yarders, 40 yarders, and 30 yarders including this incredible diving play in overtime to beat number eight ranked Penn State. He prides himself in being a pocket passer, but the dude is just an athlete. A month later when playing against Maryland, Michael would take another hit to his knee and tear his ACL in the same knee he already had surgery on. Michael would go on to say that this injury would be the toughest he had to deal with, not physically, but mentally. I'd say my second ACL tear was probably the toughest. Um, not as far as like pain wise, you know, cause I've been through the process yeah, before, mental. but um, yeah. it was just mentally, you know, um, I'm just like, dang, uh, that's, that's two <laughs> torn ACLs. And um, so the way they did it, they take my patella tendon out of one knee the first time, the second time they took it out the other knee. So I'm like, okay, they took my patella tendons. We got nothing um, left. <laughs> next thing they're going to take is a hamstring tendon. And they say that's not strong enough. So it's like, 
in my head, it's just like, dang, I can't go through this again. So it was tough. Um, 2021 season was real tough on me, you know, for me to be locked in and, you know, just get my all for, for my team. And I feel like I was just battling a lot, you know, with, with those mindsets of me, you know, thinking about stopping playing football because of my injuries and stuff like that. And uh, it was always like, if I tear my ACL again, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So it, it was hard for me to um, enjoy football at that time. But, you know, like I said, you know, just having those people around me continue to support me and lift me up, you know, they, they kept me going. Even with this injury and playing just six games that year, he was one of 17 semifinalists for the Davey O'Brien Award, which is given out to the nation's best quarterback. He would make another speedy recovery from his ACL surgery. However, as he mentioned, it was a bit tough mentally having to deal with another injury, especially the same injury he had already recovered from. So he struggled a bit with accuracy, completing passes just over 50% of the time. And in his fifth game of the year versus Penn State, he would end up spraining his AC joint in his throwing shoulder this time. This injury would not require surgery. It did, however, end his season. Michael would enter the transfer portal and in December of 2021 announced that he would be attending the University of Washington. He would be joining the Huskies as a graduate student and would have two years of eligibility remaining. The Huskies, heading into 2022, were coming off of their worst season in over a decade, finishing 4-8 under new head coach Jimmy Lake. In November of 2021, it was announced that the University of Washington would be hiring current Fresno State head coach Kellen DeBoer. He was coming off of a 9-3 2021 with the Bulldogs. And this announcement was just a month before Michael Penix Jr. announced that he would be moving to Washington. Penix said that DeBoer being a coach at Washington was a big reason on why he made the move. As back in 2019, Kellen was the offensive coordinator for Indiana, which is the best offensive year that Michael had, setting that completion percentage record. So, transferring to a university with an open QB position, a familiar coach and familiar offensive scheme, seemed to play right in Michael's favor. The new look Huskies under DeBoer and Penix would end up going 11-2 on the year, including a 7-2 in-conference record and a win over Texas in the Alamo Bowl. They would win their last seven games of the season, including big wins over the University of Oregon as well as Washington State in the Apple Cup. Penix was able to avoid all injury this year and prove that he's able to run a top-tier offense, on top of being the leading passer in the nation as well as breaking those University of Washington records. Michael then announced that he was not declaring for the NFL draft, and instead he would decide to play his final year at the University of Washington. He said the job's not done. Current day, the Washington Huskies are 4-0 and Michael Penix Jr. is the leading passer in the country. He's also setting a career mark so far in completion percentage with 74.3% of his passes being completed, and he's off to a great touchdown interception ratio at 16 touchdowns to two interceptions. Those 16 touchdowns also lead the nation. The Huskies also have two receivers in the top 13 in receiving yards, with Rome Odunzi being number two in the nation currently with 544 yards, as well as Jalen Polk with 427 yards at number 13. You know, all of them are good. I always talk about the whole room, you know. Uh, a lot of people always hear about Jalen and Rome, you know. They're top, top receivers in the country, but you know, like I said, the whole room, I feel like I know that we have the best receiver core in the, in the country and, you know, anybody else who doesn't think so, they're not watching football. You know, you, you got to watch what those guys do day in and day out. You know, they, they come out here and put on the show all the time and they just make my job easy. And, um, yeah, man, I'm just blessed to be able to be their quarterback. Currently 4-0, the Huskies are getting into the bulk of their conference play as they'll have tough matchups coming up against Oregon, USC, Utah, Oregon State, then Washington State to finish off the year. So make sure to watch some Husky football this year and look out for Michael Penix Jr. Thank you for watching and for more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on notifications. And we'll see you next time.